sexual swear words. The video certificates are there to give you the chance to make an informed choice. They allow you to have peace of mind and be entertained. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the film. It's no good you sitting there dying of thirst looking at these oranges. They're absolutely forbidden in here. I mean, well, I mean, it's not a greengrocer's, is it? I mean, they make a terrible mess. People get squirted in the eye and, and, and sometimes in the circle. I mean, all this peel, you know, the usherettes. The usherettes have absolutely refused to, and that came as a great surprise to the manager, because you see these pips. I mean, they get flicked at people in the front, and they hit them in the back, and they get trodden on. Messy business. On the other hand, we have no objection to you making loud slurping noises and dribbling down your front with Kia Ora. Orange at Kia Ora. Mm. Funnily enough, it's made from fresh oranges. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Went up my nose. Now, preview time. When it comes to entertainment, you can't beat a good film. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. Linda knows that something is out there. Something so evil, it penetrates the soul. Something lurking in the black of night, so real she can almost taste it. Something is out there, and it's coming closer, and closer, and something is out there. So terrifying, you've only seen it in your nightmares. Rated BG. President's on line one, calling about is everything okay with the alien space club and planet 10, or should he just go ahead and destroy Russia? Tell him yes on one and no on two. Which was yes, to destroy Russia or uh, the number two? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Perfect Movie. Please welcome your host, Richard Sandwich. All right. All righty. Seamless. Seamless, slick, and you have left no Oh my god, I hope that was as seamless for you out there as it was for us in the Zoom room where we got shh. 
Go! Brilliant! So welcome! Welcome to Richard Sailing's Perfect Movie! With me, hey. Andley! Hey. Woo. Yes, what a show we've got for you tonight! What a show! What show? What a show! Uh, I hope you enjoyed the adverts and trailers. Uh, uh, there was uh, the Buckaroo Banzai, uh, which is great. And in case you were noticing, he's also dressed as Matt Smith from Doctor Who, which is a nice cultural reference. That's deliberate, but just something to, uh, to liven you up. Now we are live on Facebook. Uh, so if you are watching on Facebook, do comment uh, in the page and hopefully I will come to you and I'll be able to at some point answer some of your questions, queries, thoughts, shout outs if you want me to tell you that I love you or that I hate you or that you love someone else, or just what your favourite film is, that's that's fine. I am theoretically up for anything. Uh, well, this is Facebook, so, you know, there are there are, there are are guidelines. But welcome. This is a show, for those of you who haven't been before, this is a show about films, where I talk to people about their love of films, their love of films, not their not the things they don't like, the things they do like, because too much modern fandom is about hating things, this is about loving things, about embracing things we love, whether that's, you know, right or wrong, is up for me to decide, but... You know, if I ask you what your favourite film is, for example, uh, as I will do later, some of you, I'd like to know what your favourite films are if you're watching out there. And in the people who are here in the front row, I'd like to know what your favourite films are. Remember, there are no right or wrong answers because it is your favourite film. Some films are more correct than others, uh, but there is no right or wrong answer because it is just what you like. So, you know, if you want to pick something predictable, that's fine. If you want to pick something really obscure and avant-garde, that is also fine. It's encouraged. Just don't do it to show off how smart you are. That's my job. Uh, but it's well, lovely to see everyone here. Uh, we've got some excellent guests coming up. Uh, we're going to have another game of Play Your Video Cards, right? So you can look forward to that later. And then later on, we will be talking to Ashens about his favourite uh, films and recreating his favourite scenes, which is very, very exciting. Uh, so, yeah, have we had any comments, Holly, from the uh, Facebook group yet? Or is it too early for any, any insight from anyone? It's too early. We know that someone is eating uh, 20 Easter eggs. I think he might have said mini. <laughs> so I, was in no, no, I hope, no, he did hope so. Actual Easter, Easter eggs. eggs, fully committing to Easter eggs. I always like to start by asking everyone what they're eating. Good, good. That seems like a good, good icebreaker. Big fan of the Easter egg. Uh, always, as I'm saying, always a disappointment growing up as a child. The, uh, the Cadbury's cream egg Easter egg was not an entirely massive Cadbury's cream egg. Uh, that was never quite gone over that disappointment. <laughs> then, if you think about the size of it, based on the size of your head as a child, it would have been like the most awesome. Like they would be like that. It'd be easy to be like that big. You have to eat it with a spoon, like the best yogurt ever. <laughs> I'll put like a swimming hat on to get your face right inside it, like like you're cosplaying alien. It'd be great. It'd be great. But yes, eat, <laughs> eat, eat snacks, eat drinks. This is a cinema show. Get pay a thousand pounds for popcorn. Uh, have, have a soda pop that is far too big and all ice. Uh, or a beer if you're into one of the classy cinemas that sell craft beer. Uh, if you don't know what craft beer is, it's basically very hoppy lager. Uh, <laughs> if, you like, if you think this Foster's tastes a bit weird, I'll, put, I'll just put a slight clove in it, then you can charge £4 more a pint for it. Uh, it's, an incredible, it's an incredible scam they've got going. But anyway, films, 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 films. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Uh, does anybody in the front row have a favourite film? Does anybody have? Ah, Phil. Hello, Phil. What's your uh, What's your favourite film? Well, I love a creature feature and I love a sci-fi, so it's got to be a sci-fi creature feature crossover. And for me, it's Aliens. Aliens! Yes, again, I will allow Aliens. <laughs> no, Aliens is a great film. Aliens is great. Um, what I like about Aliens is, apart from that, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it does actually have that thing of being a film that does a lot of things wrong, but you don't mind. Like yeah. it takes, I think it's like, it could be like an hour and 10 minutes before they even get to the planet. Like it takes ages for them to actually get to the planet of the aliens. And there's a dream sequence. Ripley has a dream sequence just so they can have exposition to explain what's going on. It's like, it's like, it's like terrible, terrible filmmaking, but then you get aliens. <laughs> and it's like it's fantastic, and you get a load of Marines who are just completely out of their depth. And it's like when I was a kid, I used to drive me up the wall. They weren't just. It's like why have you sent these dickheads? Send some better people who aren't all snippy and sarcastic. And I was like, no. And then you get older, you go, oh, it's because they're that good. They they think they're unbeatable. And I go, oh, I get it now. And it's great. Um, I, is it, I don't know if this is true or not. Do you know the apocryphal, probably apocryphal story of how James Cameron pitched Aliens? Do you know about no. this? Went into the 20th Century Fox, 
and he wrote alien on a blackboard and then he put an S on the end and then did the dollar sign down the S. <laughs> <laughs> For, uh... <laughs> he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong, was he? He wasn't wrong. It's fantastic. Uh, I like the fact that my second favourite pitch story ever is that someone said, I was doing a screenwriting sem seminar, he said, what's the best pitch you've ever heard? The best pitch you've ever heard. And he said, I remember this guy came in and he said, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito, twins. <laughs> <It says> like, <laughs> people just couldn't get their checkbooks out fast enough. It was like, <laughs> yes, yes, please. Now, now, uh, well, again, Aliens is great because it has that thing where it helped, because Alien was Alien, it was like a haunted house in space, you know, that kind of vibe. By getting sort of different directors and people that involved, it's nice that each each one has its own has its own life and its own vision, and its own story, despite being sort of part of the same, like, canon universe. I think that's a really, I think more, it'd be nicer if more franchises could be like that, but not be, like, bonkers and disjointed i think that's a great thing so yes aliens well done aliens is correct congratulations <laughs> you have succeeded in your first task uh, does anybody else have a favorite film in the front row yeah oh who's who's there who's there put, put me at someone Holly. Um, who do we want brian watts wants to know what your thoughts on land before time are who <laughs> land before time land before time yeah brian watts well i mean it's it's you know I just remember it being incredibly sad. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it being one of those films you'd watch and then you'd just be like, why is everyone dying? Why is there just a continual pervasive mood of melancholy and sadness? It's like an existential dread. And then I think there's like, there's like 75 sequels. There's like the land before, there's like the still the land before time. There's millions of it. It's great. It's like you watch, it's like land before time does for you as a child what up does for you as an adult. <laughs> oh. Well, the first ten minutes of up, and then the rest of it's like I don't care about that. I'm, I'm spent. So, uh, yeah, Land Before Time, Land Before Time. I haven't seen it for since I was a child, probably because I'm too too traumatized to go back and watch it. But it's 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 great. Uh, yes, Land Before Time. Is that, is that is that a favorite film, or do they just want to know what I think about it? They just asked what your thoughts were on it. Well, now they know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so any answer was correct there. Yes. Yeah, what are your thoughts on it? I have no thoughts. That could have been an answer. So that's a good. That's a good. That's a good start. So sorry. Let's do one more. Uh, one more person in the front row. Ah, should I do Don? Don, Daddy White. Hello. Yes, uh, Daddy White on the Sweet Podcast. Um, yeah. So my favorite film is very obscure, and I don't think anybody would ever agree with me. But it's uh, National Treasure Two. National Treasure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so take that for what you will. I, I think it's amazing. It has a great soundtrack. Uh, Nicolas Cage is an interesting actor for that niche market, and uh, I think it has a good storyline. So, <laughs> but specifically, of all the films ever made in the world, that's your favorite. That's your favorite film. <laughs> so, by favorite, I category, um, I, I put it as. If I had to sit down and watch a movie right now, what would I turn on? And would That's correct. Favorite. That's the right answer. Yeah. I say I describe it as if, if as soon as it finished, could you watch it again? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, <laughs> that's correct. So yeah, that's great. So now, who? Because like, Nicholas, I do. Nicholas Cage is like the thing with Nicholas Cage is there's a sort of like, isn't it cool to like how weird Nicholas Cage is? But actually, like Nicholas Cage is really great, and I do love the fact that he's bonkers, and it's weird how so many of his films are sort of terrible, but he's still good in them. Like, he doesn't just sort of phone it in, even though he's in an absolute, like, train wreck of a movie. Like, he'll be in some, right. you know, he's just... He, I think there's a film where he's even, like... And it's, like, his, his, like, commitment to facial hair and wigs and beards and things, when you go, like, what are you... It's like he did that trailer in Grindhouse as Fu Manchu, and he was like, I think I'm just going to do this for like everything I'm acting, I'm just going to get a weird moustache or a wig and a sort of silly hat. And, you know, he's like, he's like, he's like the fun John Cusack now, isn't he? He's like making the same boring movies that John Cusack's making, but he's sort of not boring in them. Is my thoughts, but yeah. Fair, a fair assessment. And I <laughs> am a, uh, I'm a manager at a local movie theater. So uh, there's actually, they premiere movies uh, to us early. Um, and it's kind of weird because they'll show like green screens in the background because the trailer's not even finished, but there's going to be a National Treasure 3 coming. 
There yeah. is. What's, what, what's the like? What's this? Is it? Is this? Is it, surely it has to be international treasure at some point. I, I I have to sign that I can't say anything about it. Oh, I'm so I'll sorry. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> okay. I can say that I I saw it. That's all I can say. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, oh, no. That seems like that seems like a slight. That seems almost like a sort of negging conversation. It's like I've seen National Treasure three. What's it like? What's it about? Can't say. It's like, ah, well, okay. I've seen a trailer, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the terrible foreshadowing in the in the films. You watch the films, they're like, "What is this? There's no time. There's no time. I'll tell you next week. Well, just just tell me now. There's plenty of time to tell me now." No, but that's good. So National Treasure Three is coming out. So that's something to look forward to. Something, yeah. something to, yeah, that's worth surviving the pandemic for everyone. Uh, <laughs> stay alert. There's National Treasure Three coming. <laughs> stay right. indoors. Protect the NHS. Make sure you make it to National Treasure Three. That will be on the podium next week. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, one of the things, oh, one of the other things, speaking of uh, things coming out, the trailer for Tenet was released this week. Did anyone see the trailer for Tenet? Uh, Christopher yeah. Nolan's new movie. I saw the trailer, and in keeping with Christopher Nolan's uh, work, the trailer is 40 seconds too long and really drags in the middle <laughs> <laughs> and has massive pace and, and, and story issues. Uh, so, it looks good, it looks good. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look good. It looks looks like a dodge of a movie, like all these other movies. I mean, I don't. I'm not saying he's bad. He's not bad. Uh, he's just good in a way that doesn't work on me. Uh, that is the problem. Uh, as I say, Christopher Nolan is to sci-fi what my parents are to Wi-Fi. Uh, I sort of know what it is, but the way they set it up makes it really hard to connect to it. <laughs> 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 An actual joke. <laughs> so, we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to move on. Is, there, is anybody ready for an act? Yes. yes. Someone to come on and speak yeah. to us and tell us some film related yeah. material. Well, one of the things we do, if you've not seen Perfectly before, what I'd like to do is get a, uh, we'd like to shout film quotes out before I bring the act on. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best. I'm not saying it's good, it's going to be my best. Alan Rickman impression, and I'm going to say, do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? And you, in the front row and everyone at home, are really loudly going to shout out, yippee ki motherfucker. <laughs> uh, if you, I know that's like, you might feel a bit uncomfortable, but you don't have to say yippee ki uh, <laughs> I want my neighbours to wonder what is happening. I want them to be like, what is this happening? So I'm going to do my voice, it be like, do you think of Charles Gosling as a cowboy? And then you shout it out. They'll be in the act on. So is everyone ready for the first, the first quote? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good, because it's coming. Who, <clears throat> who, who? Look at the voice. Who? <laughs> Come to my room, Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Cello. Uh, do you who, who? Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mister Cowboy? Yes. I'm going to assume that's amazing. Will you please, ladies and gentlemen, with a whoop and a cheer, welcome to the stage, the Story Bee! Hello, it is I, the Story Beast, your friendly, jovial, not at all drunk wizard and storyteller for this evening. So... Here is my first poem for you. Uh, now, I, I'd just like to make it quite clear, you know, I, a lot of people rankle. I've come to essentially a lowbrow art form celebration and I brought, you know, highbrow poetry. So we're very much meeting in the middle here, but I, I'd like to make this entirely clear to you. Um, I am constitutionally against poetry that means things. <laughs> so, so don't worry about that. Anything, anything so transitory as, as meaning is is not is not what I'm here for. This is this is a poem about a certain point in movies. So I, I hope you'll enjoy with that. And um, if you hear anything like a resonance to what's going on today, that that's purely coincidental. So without further ado, uh, I would like to share with you my brand new poem written specifically for you guys tonight. Second spike. Too spiky, too spurious. <laughs> you know that bit in every film 
more sink than swim, prognosis grim, the monster approaches the picket fences of every town, everywhere, deaf and defenseless. And for all of the signs of the features of creatures, the mayor insists that they open the beaches. Despite the slew of local teens separated from their bras and jeans, and indeed their guts, but it's not what it seems. There can't be a killer. We'd have heard all the screams. There's no masked man behind the scenes on a killing spree every Halloween. There are no gremlins, critters, sharks. So let's just open up Jurassic Park. I mean, sure, that raptor killed one guy at the start and the electric fences need constant restarts. But, but who needs a health and safety assessment when your backers need returns on their angel investments? While a dickless guy at the EPA shuts down the laser containment array that keeps all the busted ghosts at bay, while the scientists beg for another delay, because no one wants to hear from these prophets of doom, your Jeffrey Wrights, John Hurts, Jeff fucking Goldblooms. Jodie Foster told us a tornado is coming. Yeah, the wind's picking up, but we're sure that it's nothing. Because God himself couldn't sink this ship. A sentiment coming from the well-heeled lips of powerful people ignoring the horrors while constituents wave to the flying saucers atop tall buildings without proper precautions. And as the alien death rays begin to glow, Dante's peak looks about set to blow. Robert Wagner returns to the towering inferno and they carry Kane back to the starship Nostromo, ignoring the company quarantine procedures set up to deal with such things as facial adhesions from xenoparasitical alien breeders. Cause it's a night to remember, a perfect storm, no question or quake of a wave or a swarm, ignoring the tremors that point to Godzilla's, all aiming our phones at the dancing gorillas. Because there's no one to blame for San Andreas's fault or that Precinct 13 wasn't prepped for assault. And you can't hear the audience shouting from the stalls not to go into the Bates house at all. That's that. That's that. <laughs> uh, I'd say it's not about anything. Not about anything um, uh, at all. Um, uh, this next one's a bit cheerier, though. Uh, it, it's a murder ballad, <laughs> and it's uh, it's again. It's I mean I don't know why I brought this one to you guys. It's uh, it's called uh, Angel with a Filthy Soul. <laughs> and uh, I hate to say, if anyone who happens to be American in the room, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to be doing my best, by which I mean my worst beat poetry voice for this. So I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, any Americans. Kevin killed his first at the age of eight. Didn't do it with spite, didn't do it with hate. Just swung a paint can at a criminal's face and laid him out, stony dead. He killed his next on the very same night, in the very same house, in the very same fight. A skell's head got blowtorched up real bright. Poor bastard's now missing a head. Instruments of torture littered the floors, a burning hot doorknob melting out the back door, an orgy of evidence that the cops just ignored. The kid was defending his home. Don't worry, Mrs. McAllister, Kate. There's a stand your ground law that we got in this state. Kid was just scared. Kevin's only what? Eight? And besides, he was home alone. <laughs> <laughs> they chose not to see he was killing for sport. Missed blueprint showing the malice of forethought, which is why that Christmas Kevin didn't get caught. And that was a crying pity because Kevin killed his next when he turned 10. Must have still seen the faces of the two dead men because he slipped away from his family again to get lost in New York City. 
Modus operandi, same as before. He lures in two junkies to burgle a toy store, tempting them on to the killing floor with prospect of money for meths. Inside, they fumble in abject confusion, staples and bricks to the face, leaving bruises. They try to escape, but it's worse than useless. They're stumbling towards their deaths. A steel sink rigged for electrocution. Guy washes his hands and then blows all the fuses. Another's consumed in a fiery ablution. Kerosene down the toilets got lots of uses. Explosion that follows leaves the whole place a ruin. So no witnesses and no evidence proving Kevin's extrajudicial executions. So NYPD cannot draw a conclusion. And even then, if they did, The same thing happens again and again. Kevin churns out the sequels of Murdered Men, Christmas 93 to 2010, till Kevin's no longer a kid. McAllister's murder machine moves on to Baton Rouge, Baltimore, Buffalo, Boston, Topeka and Tulsa, Tacoma and Tucson, to Lewiston and Newton and Rooston and Houston, till someone connected the dots. FBI got a real hot tippies in a backwater factory, Mississippi. But as they roll out, all set to let rip, he has already fired the first shot. The SWAT team breaches the wall and reaches corridors of bear traps set for besiegers to funnel them into a well full of feces. But somebody's caught sight of their man. His big brother Buzz is the only one cop who's left with his life and his gun shouting, bringing you in, Flem One! Nowhere to run! But this was all part of Kev's plan. Soon as Bud reaches that hidden room, he knows that he is as good as doomed because that's not his brother by the bomb. Tick, tick. (laughs) The rest is silence and fear. Forensics team picked with a fine comb and shovel. The bomb site that now was an unseemly puzzle with nothing to show for their pain and their trouble but a margarita pizza, <laughs> only half guzzled, and Macaulay Culkin's corpse, McAllister's double, and a cryptic note that they fished from the rubble. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And a happy new year. Thank you very much. Yeah. You enjoy- I, say, I don't know why I brought it to a load of film buffs. I, I mean, no idea. No idea. Splendid work, splendid work. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. The story beast, everyone. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Beast. Mr. Yes, beast. Mr. Please. Sandling. What are you? What are you? What? Where? Like, what are you? Where are you? Who what, are you? What am I? What am I? I mean, oh, that's a question for. I mean, that's going to take us all night. Uh, I, 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 where you can find me is easier to. Uh, you can find me at the Story Beast on Twitch and on and forward slash the Story Beast on Facebook, and you can also find me reading classic horror stories on Twitch uh, forward slash the Story Beast every uh, you know around twice, three, twice or three times a week. Uh, reading classic ghost stories from the old Fontana paperback books of ghost stories. Nice. I think I've got. Some, I was going to. I should. I'm too far, but I've got some of those myself. Very good, aren't they? I do like. Oh, they're brill. Yeah, I've, I've, I got into an argument with some of the other. Someone I haven't found any. The ones that people really recommend of the old paperbacks is the the pan paperbacks. But the thing I've discovered is they're rarer because they were made of cheaper paper. So most of them are just falling apart. So, um, these days, when they open those secondhand bookshops again, I'm in there like a shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's that's the main reason for the quarantine. That's the main reason we want it locked. Is you know just the the, the charity shop tap. I'm just like Jones in for it, man. I know. I need I need that charity shop. I mean, where do you think I get all my clothes? <laughs> you know, come on. It is a it is a it is a terrifying uh, scenario. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, so yes, another round of applause, please, for Story Beast. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And he might be joining us a little bit later for help with some uh, movie recreations. But uh, 
you know, for now, be happy and enjoy that being the story beast. Now, Holly, have we got any? Have we any comments on Facebook to uh, oh, yes, react yes, yes. to? Um, so, um, Nick Draper has asked, "Should I be worried that Natural Born Killers is one of my favourite films?" Um, not for any psychopathic tendencies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I mean, it's it's it, it's it's good. I mean, if you you like it, it is it is good. I mean. I think any film with Ronnie Dangerfield in it is is an acceptable favourite film, uh, in my opinion. So, good choice. Um, Anything also else? Also, just got a lot of love for the story beast going on in here now. I'll take oh, it. Well, good. I'll good. take I mean, it. I mean, yeah. that, is, that is correct. It is correct. Yeah. I mean, it should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think we're going to uh, move on and I'm going to play a game. Time for a game. Uh, oh, this is very exciting. Uh, so, Fiona, did you want to have a? Did you want to do a film earlier? Did you yeah, want, I did. Sir. Did you want to? Did you want to? Uh, did you want to play the game instead? Because we didn't get round to uh, to doing. I'll very, give it a go. Yeah. Okay. It's a very simple game. Uh, it's called. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the, the game show Play Your Cards Right, or also known as Higher or Lower. Um, so what yeah, I'm going to yeah. do, I'm going to show you uh, a selection of VHS sleeves from my collection, and okay. you have to tell me whether the next video sleeve, the film it's from, is rated higher or lower on IMDb than the film that came before it. <laughs> so, the first one you've got to get. So in a moment, like, you'll just see the screen. So basically, you'll like mainly hear you, but just just make sure it's absolutely clear. You win nothing. <laughs> there is no prize. <laughs> just the respect of your peers. <laughs> well, that went ages ago. Oh, good, good. Well, then, then, well, then, 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 then the stakes couldn't be lower for this game, <laughs> which is how I like it. Like my stakes low. Uh, so I will attempt <laughs> to share this and then we will play the first game. It's called Play Your Video Cards Right. Are you ready? Okay. Yep. Well done, Richard. <laughs> it worked. It worked. It worked. Play Your Video Cards Right. Woo! Woo! <laughs> so this is very exciting. So the first film we have for you is Beer. Nice. Oh, hang on, no. No, how dare you. There we go. So that's fine. So this is Beer. I don't know if everyone's seen Beer. Uh, this is sole entry on IMDb and written by a guy who also wrote three episodes of Miami Vice. <laughs> Uh, it stars, uh, as you can see, there's got quite a good cast. Where are we? It's got a uh, Rip Torn in it, Loretta Swit. It's got loads and loads of really interesting people in it. Uh, David Allen Greer, William Russ, Saul Stein, Dick Sean, Kenneth Mars. It's like it's really good. It's really good. Um, basically, it's about a it's an advertising satire where they get three normal blokes who inadvertently fall a bank robbery to be the ridiculously macho front of a deliberately sexist beer campaign to boost sales, which works. Uh, and it's like a foreshadowing of clickbait. The more people complain, the more the publicity and the sort of the joke is it's the Swift's idea because she's like, ah, we should do a thing which is basically like real men drink real beer. Now, you haven't got to guess this one, but as a, as a sort of, this is, this is, as a guess, guess, what do you think this is, uh, this is rated on IMDb? Probably five. Let's see. Let's see. We've got five points. That's a good well five point no. three. <laughs> so moving on to the next one, Motorama. Don't know if you've seen Motorama. So hitch a ride with the wildest road trips in Thelma and Louise. <laughs> This wildly original author of After Hours hits the target again with this comedy about a 10-year-old delinquent who runs away from home in a stolen Mustang and sets out on an obsessive and perilous journey to become the first winner of Motorama, a gas station contest. Music by Andy Summers of The Police. Now, code for cinema. If they ever mention who's like, music by such and such or featuring songs by such and such, it means there's nothing else to recommend the film. Uh, I quite like this one, but that is always, that's a massive red flag if you're looking at videos. 
Uh, it's directed by a guy who mainly associate produces documentaries and is written by the guy who wrote After Hours, Julia and Julia, and Vampire's Kiss. And uh, great Nicolas Cage movie. Uh, now, it's, uh, it's one of those films that I like because it's basically, there's no narrative, it's just an excuse for people to wander from scene to scene with lots of people turning up as cameos for a day, uh, which is the sort of thing that's cool, because in the 90s it's not as, like, as, as regular as it is now. So there's cameos in this film from Drew Barrymore, Meat Loaf, Flea, Michael J. Pollard, Garrett Morris, Jack Nance, and Robert Picardo. Uh, and it features that, who's the hero, uh, the, on the car, the 10-year-old boy, having an arm wrestling competition with Meat Loaf, if you want to watch want to watch that. And Drew Barrymore as his fantasy dream girl, which I think we can all we can all get behind. <laughs> so what do you think? Do you think this is higher or lower than 5.3? Well, I'd probably go for lower, although it's probably got a good cult following by the sounds of it. Yeah. But also, I would like to know on Facebook what you think, whether this is worth higher or lower. Let's see if we can get these right. Let's see if anyone on Facebook does. Well, so, high, is, are you going to go higher? Higher or lower? Lower. I still got it. I'll go for it. It is. Yeah. 6-4. Oh, oh, it was higher. So, you've fallen at the first. So, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Next one. Limit up. No, this is this is a film of Nancy Allen from Robocop who wants to watch Stock Exchange but is treated really badly because she's a woman. In a way that I imagine probably was true, but the way it's done in this film is not the most probably documentarian uh, way of highlighting sexism on the Stock Exchange. Uh, and she gets frustrated that she's not being taken seriously so she gets help from a sort of voodoo witch doctor to make her magically be good at trading <laughs> so <laughs> it's written and directed by someone who works as a segment producer and mainly makes documentaries and was co-written by cult actress Luana Anders and it is a heartwarming tale of how women can achieve anything men can do if they get into voodoo and use comedic black magic <laughs> uh, it's really, it's really heartwarming. Uh, four seconds of this were edited to make it a PG. It's got Dean Stockwell in it playing uh, essentially the Wall Street version of the person he plays in Married to the Mob, uh, and Ray Charles playing essentially himself, even though he's not not himself. Uh, so, what do you think? Do you think this is higher or lower than six? Thing? Uh, no, I've lost my confidence now. <laughs> I, I think I'll go. I, uh, I'll go lower. It can't be higher than that. Can't lower be than, higher than the other. No, it can't be. We don't know. I mean, who can say? It's <laughs> five. It's good. Yeah. You've got one more. Yeah. One more to get. So that's just, so you're almost like you you can't win, but you could come out on top. No. So the one to choose is the creator. Creator. Okay. Peter O'Toole, uh, Virginia Madsen, uh, Mariel Hemingway, Vincent Spano. Uh, David Ogden Steers, it's very, very sort of interesting, sort of one of those weird uh, sort of teen romantic comedy things that's sort of half a serious film, but also weird and whimsical. But, you know, it, it, it's fine. It's directed by Czechoslovakian New Way filmmaker Ivan Passa, who also made Intimate Lightning and Cutter's Way, <laughs> for some reason, making this. And is written by the guy's novel it's based on, who also wrote Don Juan de Marco, The Legend of Bagger Vance and The Notebook. So uh, he also wrote the book Satan about a killer computer or AI thing from the sort of 70s, which is quite interesting. So uh, basically, Peter O'Toole plays a wacky scientist. He gets Vincent Spano is his uh, sort of like research assistant. Meryl Hemingway is also his research assistant and they're lovers. But he, she's 19. But that's like that's apparently that's charming because it was the 80s. And, uh, yeah, it's basically about trying to bring his dead wife back to life through mad science. Like a sort of Frankenstein, if Frankenstein was, a, like, you know, a wacky college professor who's into, like, zen and stuff. So, uh, what do you think of that? Do you think that's higher or lower than five? Higher. <laughs> You're going higher. You're going to go higher? Oh, yeah, I'll go higher. Go on, I'll go higher. It is... I <laughs> so you came out on top even though you did not win that is excellent work well played you are you and again as I say you win nothing but congratulations that was excellent work nothing 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 <laughs> nothing <laughs> 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 
What do we win? Nothing. <laughs> what was the point? Nothing. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Did we have any? Did anyone on Facebook manage to uh, win the game, Holly? Did we have anyone on Facebook win the game? Uh, Chris and David uh, corrected. Uh, correct. Corrected guessly. Guessed correctly. Every single Corrected time. guessing. I'm going, to I'm going to take your first answer. Corrected <laughs> guessing. Yeah, Chris Is anyone else, is anyone else corrected guessing? <laughs> That's excellent. So, well, we are uh, shifting along. This is very exciting. Uh, no, 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 no notes, everyone. No notes. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're doing excellent in the front row. Keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, appropriate joining in, but not too much joining in. I'm a big fan of that. Well done. Uh, so I suppose we should probably, probably uh, move on uh, to the last bit of the show where we bring on our uh, special guest. And again, we need a film quote. Does anybody out there have a favourite film quote we could get anyone to shout out? Does anyone like us to shout a film quote out for them? Does anybody have anything they'd like before I just decide? Can I, can I, can I ask? For one? Yes, you can, Mr. Uh, could we make it... I've, it's my favourite line from the superior David Lynch film, Dune. Yeah. Uh, and how can this be? For he is the Kwisatz Haderach. No. It's the Kwisatz Haderach. You've just got to get that line right and you'll be fine. Is that no. No. It's like... Haderach. I, mean, I have a lot of stuff in my mind going at once and the correct pronunciation of quiz, Quisling... Kwisatz quiz. Haderach. Don't confuse matters, Richard. <laughs> Christine, Christine Bacharach. <laughs> Different woman. <laughs> Definitely in the remake. So I suppose after the three, what we're all going to do is after three, uh, we'll just all, we'll all attempt to shout out the quiz, Quizlack. Quizatz Haderach. <laughs> How can that be? Quizlack. The Quizatz Haderach. Quizlack sad sl Sladderat. <laughs> <laughs> Bas it's you're disrespecting a fine piece of cinema. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't want to be disrespecting a fine piece. I'm, of I, I, I'm just outrageous. Outrageous. So how well, can this be? Well, would you? What this in? Would you like to do? Would you like to do the quote? Can I do the? Can I do the quote? Yeah. Would you well, like to do? I it will. Today, I right? will then. I will. <laughs> Sorry. It's starting to get passive aggressive because of the lag. Um, no. <laughs> only because of the lag. <laughs> We like each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it, is, it is. It is weird. It's like looking in a mirror sometimes when I do gigs with uh, the story piece. I feel like I've gone more for the. I've gone. I'm like the apocalypse. You. I'm like the dark timeline. You with my with my haircut. Yeah, because it's going so well in this timeline for me. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> weird. Um, okay. Uh, and how can? So should I do? Should I count those in? So how can this be? For it, he is the Quizatz Hadarak. So one, yeah, two, three. three. Everyone join in. And how can this how be? Can this be? Oh, he is. 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 That was excellent. So well done, guys. That was well, that was seamless. That was that was like he was there. So in a moment, I will be bringing out a special guest. As soon as he unmutes and visibly makes himself present, <laughs> will you please give a round of applause, whoop and cheer, and welcome to the show, Ashens. Oh. There he is, Ashens. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm not bad, sir. How are you doing? I'm very well. I am, uh, you know, maintaining the uh, maintaining the lockdown protocols and getting on with lots of stuff. I say lots of stuff. I'm just watching telly. How are you doing? <laughs> You're not level 99 everything in RuneScape yet, then? Things haven't got no, quite that bad. No, no, no. I am playing a lot of uh, uh, online Mahjong. Oh, that's interesting. The um, game I don't know how to play, so enjoy quite that useless really, anecdote. But uh, yeah, it's quite. I mean, you just sort of click things till I basically just I just kept clicking it till things disappeared, till two things disappeared at once. <laughs> and eventually, it's like you know, I basically learned to play it like like Antonio Banderas learned learned Viking. <laughs> kept doing Brute it force. <laughs> <laughs> so my mother was a saint. <laughs> there we go. I mean, it's a bit early for the Thirteenth Warrior references, isn't it? But there we go. never too early for a Thirteenth Warrior early. reference. Come but on, the true story of the thing that doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I've come to speak to you. Uh, uh, we've done. Uh, 
weirdly done sort of many things together, haven't we? Which is yeah, uh, God, we've done ads and skits and films and films, yeah, car chases and murders and everything, really. I mean, you know, I mean, the murder. I was more an accessory. <laughs> and technically the murder weapon don't forget that <laughs> that's true it's still, it's still lethal yeah. hands yeah, I, know. I know I know but it's good yeah so we've done some stuff we were both in the uh, the first Ashens movie mm-hmm. absolutely where, where you played Ashens and I played Richard yes <laughs> really <laughs> how do we think of these things <laughs> <laughs> what a stretch that was I know it was terrible <laughs> it's like um, God, months and months of preparation, getting into character. Yeah, oh, terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was great. Oops, hang on. Oops, hang on. I've made a mistake on the tech that hopefully Holly can rectify, but that's fine. It's my fault. I apologise, Mister Stewart. That's right. I can't even tell the things different. So <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. So there we go. No, it's not. It's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. So uh, yeah. So what I was hoping for. Uh, well, yeah, because obviously you've made a second Ashens film, haven't you? you yes, technically it's, I was going to say it's complete. The sound isn't quite inserted into the Soundotron technical film term there. But we're nearly there, my God. It's, it's been a hard road. I mean, Game Child was what, 2013, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, uh, seven years, bloody hell. It's weird, isn't it? So uh, what I, uh, it's weird because the thing about it is because I, I had an opportunity uh, to be in the second film, but I couldn't go because of scheduling difficulties. Now, imagine, imagine people a time when you had to turn work down because you were too busy with other work. <laughs> imagine a situation like that ever oh happening. God. <laughs> no, no, that's, those days are gone. That's just, that's just the legends. Yeah. I know. There was a time, there was a time when people had to choose between what they did. Or couldn't I? So yeah, it's a shame. So I couldn't be in it, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, so hopefully it will come out, and I will, uh, you know, you know, I'll come to the the premiere and drink loads of free white wine. <laughs> free white wine, right? I'll make a note of that. <laughs> yeah. Richard likes white wine. Gotcha. Well, anything I put you down for craft ales, but apparently from earlier, Whew, that's not. Oh no, I do like a craft ale. I just, uh, you know, it does irk me what people think they can get away with in regards to calling it a uh, craft ale. Uh, so yeah, one I'm clove like. in some Fosters is pretty accurate from some stuff yeah. I've had. So. Yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah. very just slightly similar hoppy lager. But anyway, let's not talk. This is not Richard Sandling's. This is not Richard Sandling's perfect beer podcast. That, <laughs> not yet. I mean, that, well, almost yep, subscribe on Stitcher for that podcast later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about. So you're choosing your some of your favourite scenes from films of that. So have you always been uh, always been a fan of films? Like has it always been a thing? Oh yes. Well, everybody likes films as a kid, don't they? But you do tend to just watch the same one over and over. Often, when I was a kid, out of necessity, because you only had like four VHS tapes, um, and nothing good was ever on television. Or if it was, they put in too many frickin' advert breaks, so you missed the end of the film on the tape. Yeah. Because you couldn't tape over Inspector Morse or whatever your dad had put on first. Yeah. I'm not still bitter, Richard. Can you tell? <laughs> I mean, it was always when you'd go out and put stuff on the time, and it was always that, like... How many minutes either side do we do just to be careful? Oh, yes. But I want to keep it, but I don't want 10 minutes of garden as well before every episode of Red Dwarf Season 5. Oh, don't. I had a version of Robocop where the last few minutes were missing because there was some news bulletin about something or other. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Well, that was the other thing as well. I was trying to explain this to people who don't know this, that like, who are young, you know, that, um, they'd put films on ITV at nine o'clock and then they would stop for like 40 minutes of the news in between and they go, yeah. You've enjoyed the first hour of Predator? Well, now you've got 40 minutes of the news at 10. It's <laughs> half the news at 10, then 10 minutes of regional news, which, because you live in Essex, is basically the news at 10 again for 10 minutes, then the last hour of Predator, which time you're like, well, I'm seeing this. It's like, because, they, you know, just put it on, like, you know, I still to this day don't know, like, just, just don't put the news on or don't put the film on, do something better than that. But yeah. yeah, wait until you've got a slot long enough to put a bloody film in. Yeah, <laughs> it seems fairly sensible. Yeah. It sounds so farcical now, doesn't it? But yeah, it wasn't that long ago. My God. And even like they put films on, they put they go, we want to put this PG movie on at three o'clock in the afternoon, oh. but it's a bit edgy because it's from the eighties, so it's like edgy PG. So we'll just cut all the shit out of it that you that's like offensive. But rather than put it on at seven o'clock, well that's fine. And put it on, keep it on at three. We'll just cut everything out of it. I've got a. A video uh, of the Goonies that is 50 minutes long. What? 
because of everything they had the to do to offend <laughs> And I've got a bit, I mean, I saw Fletch was on the telly the other day, and Fletch, and they basically, it cuts to the bloke in the prison cell with my makeup on, and he says, what's your name? Ben Dover. He goes, oh, then he's out of prison, because there's nothing else in that scene. They <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a Sunday afternoon, and you're just like, skip it, skip it, skip it. One later, or do not waste my time? <laughs> There's that infamous TV version of Beverly Hills Cop where they cut out the f- murder of Axel Foley's friend at the start, which is the whole reason he goes to Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah. It's like cop on vacation or something. Yeah, <laughs> I saw a. Uh, I, I, yeah, there was there was on Channel Five. Channel Five are notorious for this. I, know I probably shouldn't name names, but Channel Five are terrible for this. Name the guilty. Shame the guilty. And they showed the Princess Bride, and because of it being on the afternoon, he couldn't say you killed my father, you son of a bitch, or stab him through the heart with a sword. So we didn't oh. get we didn't get that. He literally <laughs> five figured man, and he just like you killed my father, and better die. And then he's not in the film anymore, and then he has to <laughs> carry on. You like I feel like he never like, gets his revenge. About this. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, hang on, this is like the entire like. Oh, uh, that's I'm, that's astonishing. Yeah, it's, it's right. I've seen it, but you know, it's yeah. like watching the Harry Potter films when you haven't read the Harry Potter books. There's no concession to people who haven't read the books in the narrative storytelling of the Harry Potter films. So I'm like, so, yes, you've got, first, but, like, I don't know what's, I don't really understand why anything's happening because it assumes I've read the book and I haven't yet. So. It's kind of needed like a web page opening. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. Dumbledore had a urinary tract infection. Ah, oh, it all makes sense now. Yeah. yeah. Ah, ah, ah. So yeah, so when you were, you know, watching all the movies you love as a child, do you remember like as you got a bit older, the film that made you go, <gasps> like cinema is the, you know, cinema is the thing. Like I love movies now. Or like there was a film that really struck with you when you were of a certain, I don't say certain age, I don't mean like that sort of film. But when you came to <laughs> age, was I'm there, glad you asked. You yeah. uh, <laughs> it was Pulp Fiction for me. Pulp Fiction, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we were just too young to go and see it in the cinema, but we went anyway and got in because we were tall. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I must have watched that three times, I think. It was that thing of, um, I'd, I'd only seen very sort of fairly straightforward narratives and that in films up to that point. So the fact that it came along, A, at a time when it was incredibly cool, B, it was a bit different, C, I was old enough to actually understand it. They created this sort of perfect storm of us getting very, very excited about Mr. Tarantino for a, a few years till he made some other films. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing. Is like, as I sort of for me, because I had the same thing. For me, it was probably Reservoir Dogs. Like when I saw Reservoir, because that was like we had a pirate copy went round the school. Yes, the, VHS, pirate, the pirate copy of VHS. I've still got it. You know, I mean, obviously don't raid me. I haven't got it, obviously, but I've got it. Uh, and it was just like. I've still never seen Reservoir Dogs like on a pristine print because I just feel like that would sort of spoil it. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> you know, I like, don't know if I want to watch Clockwork Orange without Spanish subtitles. I don't know if I do. Don't know if I do. <laughs> yeah, you're missing part of the experience. It was like, this is amazing. I'd never, it was that perfect time of like, I'm now intelligent enough and old enough to get cinema. I've now seen, it's probably it's just basically it's like my first proper good film. So it could have been anything, but it was, you know, Reservoir Dogs. And then I'm a bit like you where I like, like Reservoir Dogs, like Pulp Fiction, like the first nine hours of Jackie Brown. Yeah. And then I can pretty much take or leave anything else, unfortunately. It's a bit long. They are a sweet nine hours, aren't they? But yeah. The, the, the 18 that come after, I mean, they're all right, but uh, yeah. they do we feel We had to release Kill Bill as two movies because we couldn't trim it down into into like 90 minutes. Like, I, I could. Give it to me, I'll do a 90 minute version of I mean, I'm pretty sure fanedits.org has probably got several examples. Of <laughs> yeah. it. Like, there's definitely, you just basically have. 12 about 20 minutes from the first film and then take out half an hour from the second film and there you go that's your movie that's all you need that's all you need done yeah. job's done oh, fixed it fixed the problem think of the money we could have saved them yeah. well they actually made a fortune from both so we would have lost some money ah now I get it yes. let's see yes yes so uh, um, before so we're going to move on for a second but is there, has anyone said anything on Facebook Holly for myself or Ashens or the Story Beast to uh have to field or bat or whatever the phrase is talking about um disney editing um stuff so yeah that's what the talk is about at the moment the talk is about disney editing the editing of the movies yeah good yeah. oh that's happening on disney talking. plus isn't it i've heard that i think i saw yeah, basil the great mouse detective and we didn't see the bat die oh what i think one of those ones well that was a that was a that's a terrifying film uh for a child not I right. heard their version of Adventures in Babysitting. They've cut the really strong joke because it had a swear word in it. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh. No good. I know, but that was the thing, was it? It's like all these movies that were PG, but for one swear word, therefore they're 15s. Like, yeah. it's a weird thing. Oh, my gosh, it's a 15. It's just basically a PG, but someone says fuck. Yeah. That's right, I dropped the F-bomb, guys. We're going off piece. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's, Richard's done it, everybody. We can yeah, do that's it. it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Snowflakes. <laughs> it's not true, it's not true. So, um, so you've chosen some films for us. You've chosen some films for us. Um, I have indeed. Middle and end to any films. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's 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 it's... It's it's definitely one of the most highbrow uh, <laughs> lectures we've had. I won't lie to you. I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure if everyone's quite going to have the emotional capacity to fully embrace <laughs> what we have on offer for them. Oh um, God! Um, but before <laughs> before we move on to your first actual first choice, I'd like to know: Were there any other uh, like? beginnings you thought of yeah well, one of my favorite movie beginnings i was gonna use but i've used it actually for the second scene because the first scene just has so little dialogue in it and i've already picked a third scene which has no dialogue so i need to, i need to make this a little bit more sensible but it's the opening to stone cold the 1991 <laughs> brian bosworth like absolute epitome of all 80s action films distilled and injected directly into a junkie's retina <laughs> I mean, he opens this film, Bosworth, as a character called Joe Huff, which is like the greatest tough guy name ever. And he's wearing a leather jacket that makes him look like a villain from a sci-fi film. And ah, oh, it's just, it ticks all the boxes, none of which should ever be even looked at, let alone ticked. I love it so much. <laughs> I mean, I think it's also obviously one of the concerns when you do this as a live stream show, we're all sitting down, is like, pick your favourite scene. We're essentially sort of saying pick your favourite dialogue scene. Yeah. Quite, I mean, it would be quite tricky live. I mean, I think, I think it would look really good given the sort of the layout of this in gallery view, but it would be quite tricky to recreate, say, the opening to X-Men 2 when Nightcrawler <laughs> assassinate the president. <laughs> um, if you could all just next time just all bring a flash of blue. Yes. <laughs> yeah. that, every day, yeah. take it first, <laughs> blue up. So it's largely lots of chats. Uh, but we've got a... a um, uh, an interesting uh, beginning. So what is your favourite opening scene to any film, to any, <laughs> to any film ever? Sure, yeah, this is absolutely the best opening scene to any film. It is one of my favourites for Twisted Reasons. So this is the 1984 horror film, Pe and he said Peaches, that'd be a fucking weird horror film, Pieces, um, <laughs> which is a film about a serial killer with a jigsaw who wants to cut bits off women and sew them together into the perfect woman, kind of, I don't know. They don't quite establish it properly because the film's <laughs> fucking a, mental. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not a film for, it's not, it's not, a, it's not an allegorical film, is it? It's not really. No. It's not, it's not <laughs> the tagline for the film, as you probably know, is it's exactly what you think it is. <laughs> That's the tagline for the film. Well, I think I have. Realised when well, years ago, I actually do own it on uh, this DVD as part of a Ford thing. <laughs> That's the kind of release it deserves as part of a Ford movie. On, uh, I, when I did a year at summer camp, this also has the Devil's Nightmare. Oh, that kill and kiss me, kill me. All of is that an option, or do you have to do both? Women and uh, terrible people doing terrible things in Belgium. <laughs> Mostly making that film by the sounds of it, yeah. Yeah, but it's not a great transfer either. So, but this is this is this. If you've not seen Pieces, uh, this is this is the one. This is a it's a really pleasant film, isn't it? So, oh yeah, it's it's a joy from start to. Finish. I, <laughs> I only watched it for the first time relatively recently, and oh, I I couldn't stop laughing all the way through, which is obviously a great sign for a horror film, but. Nothing well, true because it is like really gruesome and over the top, but it is also really funny. So it's it's that weird exploitation yeah. thing where it's so unpleasant, but it's not actually nasty. To, to yeah, really unpleasant. And the like, performances are weirdly mannered. It's one of these Italian uh, early eighties horror films where they've just kind of thrown everything at it now, and they're just like, so does this quite make sense? It doesn't matter. Yeah, don't think. Just watch some blood. It will be fine. Then they film it, and you're like. Wow. Well, it's one of those films where uh, there's like, who's the masked killer? Who's the masked killer? Who's the masked killer? And even though you yeah. sort of, oh, I think I know who the masked killer is, you can't work out who the masked killer is 
because that actor doesn't play the Mark Killer. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yes. It's just some, like, some runner. Yeah. And then whenever the, the murderer is killing people, the close-up is the hands of the director. So even though you go, yeah. I reckon it's them, you can't, they, then like, the silhouette doesn't make any sense. Uh, like, That's exactly uh, it. For story reasons, I mean, you're like, well, it's obviously him, isn't it? Except... It can't be him because he's like a different size. No, no, it's, it's him. They just didn't give a shit. I saw a thing where I think I saw a. I forget which film it was now. It's like, you know, one of those one of those many films about scarecrows or pumpkins, which aren't Halloween based, but are basically like some some sort of scarecrow thing is doing something. And uh, I think that the like the the killer turned out to be this like really tall, statuesque, like sort of co-ed like woman with like you know typical b-movie cleavage but was never ever ever <laughs> played by someone with that body shape when they were like some sort of like five foot four skinny like and you go well, it can't I mean, it must be her but it can't be her because like <laughs> it makes no sense. like yeah. in um plan nine from outer space where they replaced for the better lugosi with like Ed Wood's orthodontist or whatever, and he just keeps a cape in front of his face despite the fact he looks nothing well, like. That's okay, because that's because he died during the filming. They had to keep going. Like I understand. <laughs> you can at least have somebody the same height. I'll let him off. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> I'll let him off that. When you go, who should we hire? You think like you couldn't afford that person for one, like for half and for like another half a day, just yeah. to sort of put a put a, put a, put a cloak on. <laughs> <laughs> um, the director of this, I got some of his other films. He also oh, yeah. made three he made films called Mystery Island, oh. Slugs. Oh, God, I didn't realise he did Slugs. Yeah, and hell. Cthulhu Mansion. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what that's about. That's a game of Monopoly I would play. <laughs> <laughs> you open the community chest to you. Save the chasm of despair <laughs> and existential dread forever because of the things you've witnessed. <laughs> Do not pass go. <laughs> <laughs> an elder sign instead of a get out of jail free card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to Arkham Asylum. Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> also, pass through, there's yeah. films yeah. where, uh, uh, like, all the effects are is just like it's sort of essentially it's real blood and guts. It's like real pig guts and re- like they just basically go. So it's like it's no prosthetic. They've just gone to the butchers. Oh yeah, got, like got a pig and then just thrown awful at the actors. It's like it's like. You know, it's just like this is what people did. I just can't believe people did this. It's just, you know, the smell on set must have been magical. Yeah. Well, also another another tagline for it is uh, you don't have to go to Texas for a chainsaw massacre. <laughs> <laughs> no, you go to Madrid that is pretending to be Boston. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the winter, so that the actors <laughs> filming the swimming pool scene nearly freezes to death. <laughs> it's like it's not funny. That's just awful. But like, it is so pool, ridiculous. Isn't it? Get in a pool. Yeah, but I'm going to die. It's fine. We'll get you out of there quick. Yeah. Three hours later, and they, use, they use real knives for some of the for some of the knife scenes, <laughs> like real knives. <laughs> Whoa! I did not know that. Good yeah. God! When they kill the reporter, spoiler, kill the reporter. That was like real knives. <laughs> like, Bloody hell! Yeah. And in its way, this has one of the greatest end scenes by having a last minute shot that makes no sense and totally diffuses the whole film. So that's something to look out for if you watch it at home. Yeah. Well, they're obviously doing the uh, trying to go for the Friday the Thirteenth. Like, oh my god! But yeah. like, you can't just have a oh my god at the end of your film willy nilly, regardless whether it makes any sense or not. But, yeah, it uh, doesn't even stick with the sort of rules of the universe, so to speak. No, very odd. No, I mean it's quite weird. I mean, I don't, you know, it's just weird to think that uh, Nick Fury tries to recruit him. That's the thing. Yeah, I didn't, yeah it's like. Before the Marvel Universe was even really a thing cinematic, they still have Nick. This is like weird. Like, it just makes no, no sense. <laughs> and he's played by David Hasselhoff back then. So, David yeah, Hasselhoff back in the day. This is also weird, just before we move on, because this is one of those films where there are, like, there's no one famous in it. I'm not saying no when it's done nothing, but usually with these movies, there's like a David Hemmings or someone, like, turning up. But this is like, it's kind of go, oh, you couldn't even get, like, like anyone who's, like, you know... Like you couldn't get your fortune, you know, your fortune named actors, or yeah, you know, it's just disappointing. But it is like good in a disgusting way. 
in a bizarre and nothing works. It's the least frightening horror film ever made in its own way. I think. Just, just, yeah. Well, it is just gruesome. Just also, it's that, it's that horrible, unwieldy horror where, like, like when someone gets killed with an axe, all you see is like an axe or hit them on the head because they can't do a axe going in shot. And yeah. That's almost more horrifying. The fact that all the axe is doing is that. Well, and then, yes, yeah, so then you get a cut, and they're on the floor with all the pig offal on them. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's actually weirdly more distressing the fact that it's unrealistic. But you know, it's it's a style. So, I'm sure you know, they're meant to do it like that. So could have chosen any film. You can watch. You could watch pieces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you well, should you know, I'm recreate the opening to pieces for you. <laughs> uh, so it's available on Blu-ray from Arrow, unbelievably. Are you going to play Timmy, Stu? Is that what you were going to do? Who did you want to be? What have we got? Um, You're going to be the uh, the pervy child? I can be either the pervy child or the mother. Which do you fancy, sir? Well, I thought you do Timmy. Yeah. And I'll do mother. Yeah. And then you stay with uh, Timmy. And then I think that uh, Mr. Beast will join us. I'll be playing the part of the woman. 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 Woman, yeah. <laughs> woman. And I will also then play a policeman. Excellent. Eric Just to Tyler. point out, the policeman, remember, has the worst Boston accent in the world. Well, like, yeah, I mean, they, they're all awful, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, go, 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 go. They do that too, don't they? Can I, yes. can I get some direction for woman? What is my motivation for woman? Right, so in the story, nobody knows who she is or what she does, and she never mm. appears again. Great, great, great. Using it. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is exactly what we want. So I will also attempt to do some stage narration. Stage narration? That's what it's called now. So uh, we're in a house in Boston, 1942 day. Timmy is putting together a jigsaw puzzle on the wall. Props. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a big fall. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put the pieces together again. His mother enters and smiles happily. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a big fall. Timmy approaches, uh, t- mother approaches slowly from behind. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put the pieces together again. We see mother's POV that the jigsaw is of a naked woman and the rudest part as yet incomplete. Where did this filth come from? Answer me! Answer me! Throws the jigsaw across the room. What do I have to put up with? You dirty minded little brat, playing with filth like this, just like your father. If you don't watch out, that's who you're going to grow up like. And I can tell you a couple of things about him. She picks up a photo of the father and smashes it against the mirror on the wall. The shot immediately repeats in slow motion. I'll kill you if I ever find stuff like that in the house again. Timmy backs off warily. Go get a plastic bag. I'm going to burn everything. Don't just stand there. Go get a bag. He rifles through the drawers of the dressing table. I'm going to put a stop to this once and for all. Timmy runs from the room. His mother throws some comic books on the floor. Pornographic magazines. She walks to a toy chest and starts searching through it. I'll bet he has more stuff all over the place. Hurry up, stupid, and bring me that plastic bag to junk this stuff. He turns her head to see Timmy raising an axe over his head. She screams, ah! Timmy brings the axe down four times, hitting him in the head. Each With each blow, she collapses her head, plastered with blood. <laughs> Exterior house. A woman repeatedly rings the doorbell. Hello. <laughs> ding dong, ding dong. Uh, telephone rings. Timmy, covered in blood, is sawing something off the edge of frame. He is grinning, and the sound of sawing wood can be heard. The telephone rings. Timmy completes the now blood-smeared naked lady jigsaw. Police sirens wail out. The doorbell rings again, and Timmy looks out the window to see a woman has been joined by a policeman. The police smash the door open, and Timmy hides in a cupboard. I just know there's something wrong. He's <laughs> too quiet. <laughs> police enter the house. Jesus, would you look at this? Something's been butchered up to here. Let's hope it was an, an animal. I never saw so much blood. Well, better search the place. He opens the <laughs> cupboard, revealing the mother's severed head. The woman looks away in horror. The oh. police do not react. It's Mrs. Weston. I knew it. I knew something awful had happened. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get out of here. Call the station. And little Timmy? 
<laughs> you ready? <laughs> Open the door and find Timmy. Uh, big man, mommy, mommy. Oh, <laughs> Timmy. Where's mommy? Where's mommy? Take it easy, kid. You're safe now. Where's the father? He's away in Europe with the Air Force. But there's an aunt. She lives an hour away. I'll call her and take him over there. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> Scene! Scene! <laughs> Scene! Roll opening credits. Uh, and from that point on, uh, the script improves minimally. <laughs> if anything, it gets worse. Yes, it really does. <laughs> it's fantastic work, team. Fantastic just, work. Just want to know, yeah. just in case anyone was worried, I wasn't wearing a mask for that. <laughs> was it, was no, that's not prosthetics. That was me just being a woman. That was that was that was impeccable, Mr. Beast. Yeah, Chris you Duncan genuinely put more into it than they did. I mean, it was good. It was good. I don't know where that came from. It was good. You should uh, stick with that. In here. I know. <laughs> The thing is, if the emotional core is there in the words, it's just easy to bring it out of yourself, isn't it? That's, that's the, the, any great text. Any great text will, will give you that. Oh, my favourite of that is the last, the woman's bizarre exposition at the end, which is literally delivered staccato almost. <laughs> there is an aunt. He must live with the aunt now. He will be taken away and probably murdered people later in this film. <laughs> yes. Credits. <laughs> <laughs> Is <laughs> to another woman, preferably a nubile woman, please. <laughs> <laughs> bring us, bring her. Ah, so they, and also, it's am I right? That, so they think there's murder, so they police let the principal of the school, where everyone's getting murdered, send an agent in undercover as the tennis teacher. That's correct. Yep. So that's and the that is like a sort of weird. I mean, I, it's like the thing about these Giallo movies is you see them, you're like. I could probably watch a film where this plot was done better, but like Ooh. the exact same plot. I'd, I'd watch this. If, or done so it makes sense. Like the teacher, the headmaster doesn't have to tell the parents at the school that there have been multiple murders of students. <laughs> but, oh, he doesn't have to tell you a nice fine. They just keep sending their kids here. And the police are like, well, you really should be telling people soon. Like, nah, we'll, we'll get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> And the police are helped by uh, one of the students for no reason whatsoever. They just kind of force him to help them and come back to the station and do police work. It's just... yeah. uh, so many good things. But my so, abs... Oh, sorry. Okay, no, I was going to say my favourite thing in the intro there is there's two massive flaws for 1942. One is that they had telephone rings and it's quite obviously a 70s telephone. And two, she wants him to bring a plastic bag, which weren't invented for another ten years or so. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even didn't even think about it. <laughs> but the truth, it's all about the truth. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the truth of the emotion behind it, which is entirely missing. You know, yeah. the non-naturalism, you know, you can take or leave that, but you know, that's yeah. a choice. That's evidently that plastic bag, that's yeah. an essay to be written, isn't it? <laughs> But not one anyone would read. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're moving on to your favourite miscellaneous scene. Certainly. Is any scene from any film ever? Did you? Like, so before we get to one you've chosen, what what other ones could you have chosen? You oh man, for, for the middle scene, there's a lot of great ones here. Isn't I mean, going back to Pulp Fiction, there's all sorts of films. In fact, we did a Pulp Fiction one before, didn't we? Live I so, once, yeah. I think we did. Yeah. Podcast. Yeah. There's some really nice little scenes. A lot of the 80s action films have little scenes and little exposition bits where they're forcing it in slightly and they bring me so much joy. Um, I'm trying to think of something that, uh, perhaps from a film that isn't what people would call trash before I punch them in the jaw. Um, <laughs> Low art, that's what I like. Low, oh, I like that. Right, I'm, I'm having that going forward. Yep. Low right. art. T time for a nice bit of uh, low art as we watch Kill Squad or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. what have you, so what have you chosen for your favourite scene from any <laughs> film ever of all the hundreds, <laughs> over a hundred years and 70,000 countries worth of cinema... And I had to watch all of them to realise this was the best. 
Um, <laughs> Best scene ever from any for ages, like three whole days. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this. I kind of was talking about the intro from Stone Cold earlier, but we're going to jump into a later scene in Stone Cold where Joe Huff is about to go undercover as John Stone in order to stop a, in order to get into Lance Henriksen's awful biker gang come paramilitary organization, which they need to infiltrate before they destroy the nation's capital or something or the, the local uh, not another one of those. Yeah, I know that old chestnut. Yeah, oh, God, another paramilitary biker gang. Well, I mean, if you want a movie about uh, former NFL players yeah. turn actors bashing heads, this is for you. Um, <laughs> it really? Is. The thing is, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Um, uh, all Brian Bosworth movies sort of blur into one for me. I, uh, I don't want to watch anymore because so, I know I'll lose the plot of this one. But they also blur into all the Olivier Gruner movies, <laughs> which also I can see that. Once. Yes, yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, these are all basically one film called Shadowstone <laughs> and Gruner Bosworth. <laughs> Just this movie soup. <laughs> well, every time I see it's like every every like every front picture is exactly the same, the same font, the same thing. They've all got the same font, you know, like lay, layout, the same actors, oh, yeah. the same villains. I'm just convinced they're all just one film. Damn, I thought I might have the Blu-ray hand you I could hold up. But I don't, so that's useful. But yeah. <sighs> it's like, it's a weird film because it's like, it's directed by uh, Craig R. Baxley, who is a stunt man, one of the old school, you know, to proper like, st- did stunts on Predator and lots of the other things and directed lots of, directed Dark Angel, the Dolph Lundgren, Alien Bounty Hunter movie. But it's weird because it's directed by a stunt person, it doesn't really concern itself with the actor's and they're acting. Yeah. <laughs> Would you know that sounds quite stereotypical? Because I know plenty of uh, very gentle, delicate souls who work in stunts. Uh, I do. So, but, you know, the idea that you could be into stunts and also understand nuance and acting is, of course, like not a given. You know, like it, it, it's a thing that can happen, but in this it doesn't. But also, he doesn't really do very good stunts in it either. So it's not like you go, I'll put up with this wooden acting because at least the explosions and the fighting's really good. It's like, We've got a, we've got someone who doesn't understand acting, but also seemingly doesn't understand the thing he does for a living. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of these films where everything is just good enough. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Except maybe the plot and some of which is kind of what makes me love it because it's so well. As we say, it's basically they've just distilled every eighties action yeah. film without fully understanding how plot and people work. But also, it's nice to it is nice to watch a sort of nine those those action those dumb action movies, and I mean that with respect. I do like doing like with respect where it isn't like post Sopranos where everything you have to be read every, you read everything you watch now. It's like you go well, he's got to infiltrate the biker gang. You're just going to beat someone up in a bar and then they'll go, he's good. We should have him in our crew. We don't need seventy five minutes of like like new. You know, we don't need the seventy five characters having these conversations. It's like. Hello, I'm R. Put me in your gang. Okay, you know what I mean. That's literally, <laughs> that's literally yeah. the scene I've picked. <laughs> yes, for that reason. Yes. And so I do quite like the simplistic approach of like the plots making limited sense. You know, because it's very easy to go. Hang on, why does it need to be all smug and like pick holes in it? But they've deliberately written it just to sort of get on with it, which is yep. why I, sort of, I appreciate the film that gets on with it. We got ninety minutes. We want people to have fun for these ninety minutes. Bloody get on with it. Yeah. And also, this is because it's got um, William Forsyth in it, hasn't it? As I think in this scene, yes. as well as the film. And he was making it exactly the same time that he was filming the Stephen Seagal. Is it Out for Justice, where he plays the. the oh, the, God! The, 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 I haven't put two and two together, but yeah, same guy, isn't it? Bloody he was hell. making it exactly the same time, and apparently he would just do like two days on this, then go and do two days on that. <laughs> That's where he's got the same hair and the same beard and basically playing the same character in both <laughs> Too confusing to not to just be the same person in both films because he's making it at the same time. It's a pity because one's a romantic comedy aimed at children. So yeah. you know, it's, it's... <laughs> Steven Seagal is out for justice. <laughs> uh, justice is of course ice cream, and it's just the scrapes he gets into as he tries yeah. to. <laughs> That's what he's... he's got to get this new flavour of like ice cream for his uh, like orphaned child. <laughs> <laughs> Desperate for a flake, but there's none left in the state. <laughs> Ah, oh, Steven Seagal ice cream flake movie. <laughs> the film that never was. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, so we're going to uh, do this scene. So this is a scene. <laughs> a, so what you've chosen for your miscellaneous scene, given we're all sitting down, is a fight in a bar. That's right. <laughs> Wait till you see what I've picked for the third one. <laughs> Good. So I, you, I, I'd just like to ask a question and make a note as well as someone coming to the text fresh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I very much enjoy the directorial, the screenwriting choice to every character best have a one syllable name. Yes. Yeah. We've got gut, yeah. puff, yeah. ice. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I'm starting to wonder whether customer and woman, I mean, also woman. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, woman is probably actually a single syllable name like La, and nah. the customer's name is. <coughs> that's my guess. Good. Yeah. That's only half a syllable. I know. I, I think yeah. that's, that's they've very... run out of syllables with too many characters. Good. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask because oh, I'm playing the character of Gut, marvelous, uh, and indeed the character <coughs> as well. But the I think Gut. Uh, can you give me? Can you give me again? What What is Guts? What would? What's his five year plan? <laughs> gut is called gut because he eats a lot despite mm. the fact he's not overweight I don't know how that works um, mm. he obviously perhaps everyone else in the biker gang eats very very little oh, good good. Uh, yeah just, just yeah. perhaps he works out a lot so yeah just, it, metabolism probably, yeah, metabolism, probably metabolism to be fair yeah and yeah, gut is well the well. nice guy he's oh. the nice guy in the paramilitary neo-nazi biker gang they, cool. for some reason they've got a nice guy in there yeah I, I mean yeah I'm, I'm sure they no, they don't exist. Fuck that. No. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll try and play nice within that yeah. field. And you're supposed to be feeling sort of a bit sorry for him later on as you see his meeting house with loads of swastikas up on the wall. And you're like, not entirely shone down with this guy. Got to be honest with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not. Um, I'll try and provide it with some, some, I mean, some empathy. I mean, no, some no. Empathy. <laughs> it's not possible. I don't know if not sympathy, is. empathy. Yeah. It's out okay. of remove. It's out good, of remove. Good. <laughs> so, are you going to be Huff, Mr. Mr. Stew? Shall I? I'll, I'll happily be Huff any day of the week. And I'll be uh, I'll be Ice. I'll be William Forsyth. Mm-hmm. And uh, and 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 uh, I will also be the woman. You can be the customer as well, uh, Mr. Beast. I'm I'm looking forward to it. So, playing a non-Nazi, I get to play all the roles. Yeah. So. Just play a sort of slicky rednecky person instead of a Nazi. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> full, I, I think that was on the casting sheet for the film. Yeah. <laughs> so, Huff approaches Ice and Guts' table. Ice is making out with his girlfriend. <laughs> it's literally like that. He's eating watermelon and then... Yeah. It's awful. It's an awful kissing scene. Gut tries to get his attention. Hey, Ice! Ice! Answer me a question. How come your old lady's been eyeing my tail all night? <laughs> my, my, my! <laughs> we got here. Looks like we got us a grown up version of Bam Bam. You show how pretty Bam Bam. Look, I just asked the question. You're a real pretty boy, ain't you? Ain't you a pretty boy? You a pretty face. How'd you like me to fuck it up for you? <laughs> what do you want? I just got out of the pen. I thought I heard you boys were the heavy hitters in town, but I guess I was wrong. Ah, you a yardbird, motherfucker? I did my time. Pretty boy like you must have done some painful time. You gonna use that stick? You wanna dance with me? Ice! Get down here! Ice! Ice leaves. The woman is being grabbed by a customer. Let me go! Let's get out of here! We want our money back, and we want it right now. You sold us some bad shit. I see, Zoe. I heard the bitch say, haul your ass. You can do it, or I will. We didn't come here for no fight. Just give us a grand, and we'll be gone. I got news for you, baby. You're already gone. Boom! Kicks oh. him in the nuts. Uh, oh. The ball breaks out, by which time Gut is attacked by another customer thrown to the floor. Ice! Ice, help me, Ice! Get off me, man! But Huff enters and protects Gus, viciously beating his attacker. Throws him over something. You all right? <laughs> Huff is attacked by another man. It easily beats him, throwing him across the room. Damn, man! Damn! Watch it. Next time, mind your own fucking business, honey. You're welcome. He's a nice guy. And scene! 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 
Ah, the Tony Awards will be coming. Mm. So in two pages, Huff has ingratiated himself into the gang, made a friend in it, established that Ice is an asshole, established that Gut is a bit friendlier. Like, in two pages. I mean, that's efficiency, isn't it? It's the zip file of plots. It so, really yeah, is. Absolutely. So they can have more mildly disappointing stunts. So. Great. Mm, great yeah. stuff. So as we come uh, into the final stretch, we know, like, you know it is going along. We're just going to have a quick... Uh, Move on to your final scene. So, do you have any uh, favourite, like potential miscellaneous, like any scenes that didn't quite make it in? I mean, yeah, we mentioned it earlier, but pieces for that ridiculous out of nowhere. Hey, remember this film we made? Yeah, we'll ignore that now for the last two seconds. That's always going to be a bit special. It's always that. a bad idea to set a film up for a sequel that isn't going to happen. But yeah, precisely. We might get a sequel, so let's set that up at the end of this one. No, just end the film. Yeah, just end the film. It's fine. Like. <laughs> It's, it's all good. It's fun. What's the film they released a few years ago where the film doesn't end? It tells you to go to a website. Was it The Devil Inside? I don't know. Something like that. Some of your chat like probably know. Because I'd be furious. Yeah, the audiences went fucking berserk about it. Like, what? You know. I don't even like being told to subscribe. To, to yes, yeah. <laughs> don't to ring that bell. Yeah. <laughs> So what end scenes, again, another highbrow of any film from Ooh, yeah. any film ever. Yeah. What is your favourite ending to any film ever? This actually may be my favourite ending to any I film. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not a good choice. As I say, there are no right or wrong answers. I'm just yeah. saying all the films, Stu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of which I've seen many. This was the greatest. So this is a film I've been thinking a lot about recently because it keeps coming up with little bits of um, work and doing stuff, but Robot Jocks. Robot Jocks. Stuart Gordon's There's Not Wars in the Future. Instead, they have two big, giant mech robots beating the shit out of each other, and whoever wins gets to claim the area of land they were fighting for. Yeah. And it's such an odd film because it's... But by the admission of the writers, one of them was trying to make a sort of highbrow, or relatively highbrow sort of action film with a lot of political undertones and, you know, allusions to other works. And the other one was making an exciting film for basically teenagers. Oh, yeah, dear. It doesn't, and that's, that's the thing about it. It's like, it, it, there's so many 80s movies like that, though, where they're like, it's sort of for kids, but it's too gross or disgusting. Or sort yeah. of sleazy in a weird way, or but it's also too childish for adults to really like it, so it doesn't sort of quite work. You know, I just think like How are the Ducks a good version of that, where it's like kids are just like, "What is this?" But grown ups are like, "This is a bit. Couldn't, you know, I want more. I want. I need more from you." Know, it's like it's sort of between two stools. It doesn't really work, but yeah, too, this is too distressing a... for a PG, but not like not violent enough or sexy enough for grown ups. Yeah, want to watch trash. This falls into that weird category of, yeah, some of it feels like it's alluding towards something, but it never gets there. Things like the main character, Achilles, they mention twice that he's illiterate, but it never goes anywhere. <laughs> it's just mentioned offhand twice. You know? <laughs> and it's little things with imagery in that, and you think, oh, this is going to be... Oh, no, it's just gone into nothing. And yeah. you end up with almost no actually likeable characters in the film, really, because the main <laughs> hero, Achilles, is a right arsehole. Yeah. The um, trainer is a super arsehole, although he turns out to be a double agent. Spoilers. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really odd film. I can't work out quite why I enjoy it quite so much. And I've never shown it to anyone who didn't enjoy it. No. Well, it's weird because it's, it's like, I know this is, I'm not sure this is the dictionary definition of ironic, but it is like watching one of those low budget Japanese versions of things from the 70s. Do you know? It's like watching, yes. it's like watching a, Low budget seventies Japanese version of Pacific Rim. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. Despite it. the fact that Pacific Rim is essentially like a Western version of Japanese like things. Yeah, it's like watching Battle of the Planets do Robot Wars. Oh my god, <laughs> that's something I would pay to see. <laughs> I know. Well, you have. It's called Robot Jocks. Robot Jocks. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, the problem is, is that it's one of those films when it came out. I can only. I always get. Well, I don't know, but. I always got, because of the, the covers and it being out around, not at the same time, but I always got Robot Jocks and Hardware confused as oh, well. Oh, they're very different films. Yes, right. and if it's I watch yes. Robot Jocks, I'm always slightly disappointed it isn't Hardware. 
Yeah, which, which I think is fair in general, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> you go, oh, you're not robot jokes. Yeah, oh, I thought you meant hardware. Oh, oh. Jokes, good stop motion in both of them, though, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> yeah. Although I don't think hardware managed to entirely bankrupt the studio that made it. So it's all different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, yeah, well, you've got to bankrupt the studio, otherwise, you're not making a real movie, are you? Yeah, well, exactly. Yes. I, I usually bankrupt myself. It's quicker. You know. So, again, uh, for your final scene, you've chosen. Uh, a fight. <laughs> yes. There's almost no dialogue. So yeah, I thought we'd be getting fight. tired by this stage so we can just fire through it. Yes. Yeah. So I will do the notes and I will read. Uh, who do you want to be? Do you want to be Achilles or do you want to be Alexander? I'll be Alexander. Why not? I'll be the bad guy, the Russian or Soviet in a future space Soviet. I don't know. They don't quite explain it, really. So that's fine. So basically, this is like a sort of Four minute sequence in the film, isn't it? Of like, oh, this is a, this is long. Yes, it's, it's a good two and a half. Don't worry, yeah. daylight, daylight, daylight is imminent. People, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, so basically, there's a big fight. The giant robots happen. Alexander's robot explodes violently as as Achilles watches. <laughs> yeah, that's just exactly how he does it. That's it, it that's Alexander is out of nowhere and attempts to hit Achilles with a pipe. Achilles tries to dodge <laughs> away. Come on! It's over! No! Achilles! There's like a huge gap here. Here and now! Alexander tends to hit Achilles, but he wrenches off a pipe of his own and blocks the attack. They fight with the pipes, and Achilles manages to break Alexander's arm, but, the, but he keeps fighting. The fight continues until Alexander choke holds Achilles over a flaming barrel. <laughs> Not a euphemism! Achilles <laughs> manages to hit Alexander's broken arm, making him recoil in agony. Yeah. Over. They continue to fight hand to hand on the floor, exhausted. Alexander picks up a rock whilst Achilles picks up a pipe. You can live. Yes, if I kill you. We can both live. We are both dead. We are robot jocks. <laughs> Achilles throws the pipe away. We. Can live. Alexander stands, uh, stands ready to hold the rock, but Achilles stands prone with his arms spread. Achilles raises his hand in the jocks. Thumbs up salute. Alexander smiles and fist bumps him, completing the salute. <laughs> it, that's exactly what it is in the film. I should <laughs> Roll end credits. Finale. And I've learned that people can get along. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Well, that was that was uh, <laughs> that was that was it. It's uh, such a good example of the film as well because it's so. I mean, you've got like the metaphor there of oh, they've got all their big robots that blown up. No, they're fighting with sticks and stones and stuff. Like that's the old the, Einstein uh, quote, the, isn't it? When world, whatever World War Three is fought with, World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones, blah, blah, blah. But that's as clever as it gets. Everything else is just literally... Mah! Mah! And then it all feels really weird, awkward and forced. And then a second that they become friends, the movie instantly ends. Yeah. yeah there's, there's no nothing more to say. No, there's no, no. no like, yeah. Well, again, there's none of this, like, let's up a sequel nonsense. Just, yep. just ends. Yeah. End credits. Literally straight with the cast. Brilliant. Yeah. Like, Fantastic. I was I was mildly disappointed to learn that it wasn't like Revenge of the Nerds, but you know, <laughs> metal baited Robo Jocks. But I, I do kind of want to see this film now. Oh, you I, should. This you one should. that you've sold me on. This one you've sold me on. Yeah. I know. It's very disappointing when the film you think you're watching isn't the film you imagined it to be from the blur. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is anything in a VHS shop in the eighties, let's be yeah. honest. Yes. <laughs> The deceptive video cover that gives you no information just makes you want to watch a film that doesn't exist. Yeah. The worst example ever is Rotor, I think, with the incredible picture of a cyborg, Judge Dredd, Robocop. God knows. Oh, amazing. Nothing like that in the film whatsoever. No, no. <laughs> just a man in a hat. You know. <laughs> <sighs> well, we have uh, mercifully... Uh, mercifully come to the end. Um, <laughs> yeah, before we go, Holly, is there anything pressing on Facebook that I need to address uh, yes, to everyone? There is. 
David Morgan has put forward his um, perfect movie, which he says beginning would be Lockstock, middle mm. would be L.A. Confidential, where Edmund mm. Exley interrogates three guys accused of the Night Owl murders. Good and, scene, good scene. Yep, yeah, and end is Reservoir Dogs. Oh, mm. yes. Well, we obviously, in case you haven't seen Reservoir Dogs, let's not discuss the ending to Reservoir Dogs. But yes, that is a great ending. That was like the first time I ever watched a film. I said I love Reservoir That's the first time I ever watched a film. When the film finished, I sort of just had to sort of sit there in silence needing to like just what well, i need need a minute to just process that and it's very rare there's lots of films have the ending when they go as if they go ah and normally i have that lee and herring thing of no 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 not ah not ah no no what you've done there is you've just faded to black with piano uh that is not a meaningful ending uh, but that Reservoir was the first time it happened I was just like I can't believe what I've just seen it's very rare that a film makes me do that so uh, I'm trying to think of the last time a film made me do that The Cremator Czechoslovakian film that's Ooh. that's that's, uh, that's a deep depressing that's a yeah <laughs> mine was only God Forgives I don't think I enjoyed it as a film but it, I <laughs> really afterwards just like oh dear, yeah. oh dear. Didn't have it with come and see though. I mean, I think perhaps it was just too shocking to be in shock at the end of. Something. Yeah, you've been you've been in shock for so long. You become numb to it by the time it ends. The opening credits, let alone the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like eight crazy nights with Adam Sandler. I think. <laughs> I, yes, I mean that. No, I, I, but a bit like come and see, you know, sort of you are kind of numb to the shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you are just following this poor person through a nightmarish journey. <laughs> It's I, mean, I just like the the contempt for humanity is is in, in what's supposed to be a hopeful yeah. holiday classic, and I think by virtue of the dearth the dearth of Hanukkah <laughs> holiday specials is a much watched film. But I think it is a deeply cynical fucking film, and yeah. I need this off my chest as, as, a, <laughs> as a Jewish boy who wants that kind of representation. <laughs> it needs to be slammed more. Yeah. We need better Hanukkah movies. Better <laughs> Hanukkah movies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, no one's going to make it if you don't. Well, I, I've, I've got to now. Now I've said, yeah, it, I've, now I've said it in the perfect movie arena. This it's is actually not, just a preamble to. to the crowdfunder for <laughs> <laughs> Hanukkah movie. <laughs> so you're like four weddings and a funeral, but it's over eight nights. <laughs> <laughs> at Christmas, but obviously not Christmas, you know. It's uh-uh. not even my favourite Jewish holiday, but I just think, you know, you know, for all the, you know, if you can't have Christmas, <laughs> I lived in a fairly, you know, religiously, you know, sporadic family. I, I, you know, I got to enjoy all the benefits of all that. But what about those kids who can't? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Adam. No, I know. Well, you know, yeah. And then you have one, you know, Adam Sandler gives that, that moment and blows it. Yeah. I don't know. So... This is good. So yes. Well, that's uh, that's not how I plan to end the show, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you, uh, so Phil Little has also given uh, his perfect movie, but I think he's actually on your front row. He is. Would you like to give me your front row? Would you like to give me your uh, chat? Your perfect movie, Mister Phil Little. So my uh, my opening. Uh, I'm not sure how you do the dialogue for this, but that would be uh, Betty Blue. Betty Blue. Well, look, it's just the dialogue we've got to do from Betty Blue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the middle would be uh, from my guilty pleasure, which is Pitch Perfect 2. Pitch Perfect 2. <laughs> if I haven't seen Pitch Perfect 1, will I be able to follow? <laughs> uh, the Dragon League scene. And then uh, I'd like the ending from Salute of the Drugger. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, my word. Well, I mean, I'll see what I can do if we're ever doing... Well, this is good, because now I've got these suggestions. If we ever have a thing where, like, someone can't do it or I just think, like, I'm going to do it, I can do, like, a crowdsourced perfect movie <laughs> empty. We can all do it, like, together. It'd be like a sort of, you know, it'd be like one of those terrible videos where we could all get together. And instead of, like, getting together to sing Imagine, we could all get together and do... <laughs> Salute with the jugger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone, anyone would deny us that, uh, that, that joy. But that's, that's excellent, Jess. Well done, well done, well done. 
thank you very much. Well, that is, those are excellent choices. Excellent. Um, so I suppose we should probably call it uh, call it a day, which is a shame because I'm, you know, this is, you know, I mean, it has basically. I have turned this into a Coen Brothers movie now, where uh, you know, starts while you're enjoying it. It's nice to see him back on form. Uh, you know, but then it just sort of goes on a bit. Uh, there's some nice stuff happening, lots of nice stuff happening, but it just sort of goes on and on and on a bit too long, and then it just sort of ends, and then you leave disappointed but not sure if it isn't your fault you didn't enjoy as much as you should have done. <laughs> and I think I've achieved that. I think I've achieved that in the last five minutes. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much uh, for coming. It's been great to have you in the front row. Thanks to all of you at Facebook watching at home. If you have enjoyed it, uh, please do go to the Kofi Coffee Kofi. Still don't know how you actually pronounce it. Only ever seen it written down. Richard Sandling, donate a tip. Buy me a kebab. Buy me a kebab because when this is all over, I'm going to eat so many kebabs. Uh, I promise to give nothing to any of the acts. I guarantee it. John Henry Fowler will not get funded for his Hanukkah movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get nothing. You get nothing. I'm going to be specifically cited as a, a deeply unpleasant man in this movie. <laughs> It's become a passion project of rage. It's, it's, it's moved from Adam Sandler. It's now on you, mate. Yeah, I know. On you. I'll take that on. I'll take that on. I'll take that on. But remember, obviously, uh, follow everyone on the social media. You've got Ashens here, who has many things. Every, you've got basically many things everywhere. Do you like to give a, Ash, Ashens give them a quick chat to where we can find you most? Uh, most Certainly. Time? Just Google Ashens. A-S-H-E-N-S. All one word. Like Madonna. Excellent. Excellent. I look forward to the second movie. That uh, I couldn't get, I couldn't be in. <laughs> but I look forward fucking to bothered, Goody. <laughs> Thank you to the Story Beast for joining us and doing some his excellent poetry, as as is always a joy. Thank you to you for being in the front row. Thanks to you for watching on Facebook. Uh, my name's Richard Sands. It's been Richard Sands' perfect movie. Please give me some money. Please give me some money. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Bye. Yay. Yay. Yay.